I've had the Apple Studio display for a full three months now. And in that time, it has been the single best external display I've ever used with a Mac, which is good. It's great actually, but it's also bad. Seriously, Apple's first first party display in years is so good that there's just no other display on the market that can match it. And no, this display is not perfect and it does not have every display feature imaginable, but pound for pound, this is the best display you can get for a Mac. But let's start with what this display is not. This display is not your everyday PC display or a cheap display or an insert feature here display. The studio display does not have a slew of input ports like HDMI and DisplayPort or God forbid VGA, and it's not going to play perfectly with a Windows PC. For example, you can't adjust the brightness of this display through Windows. There's just no way to do it. There's no on-screen display menu or button that allows you to change any settings at all or do any adjustments. They are all done using a Mac. This display also does not have a high refresh rate, like for a top tier gaming display or even Apple's own ProMotion displays on the MacBook Pros and iPad Pros. This is a standard 60 Hertz refresh rate and it's fine, I guess. There's also no HDR support on this display either because it's a regular old LED backlit panel with lights on the edges so there's no local dimming or individual pixel dimming like you get with OLED. But that's not to say that this panel looks bad, and it doesn't. It has much better uniformity and contrast than any other cheap display you'll find on Amazon or Costco or whatever. Now the studio display will play HDR content on YouTube, but it's not really HDR. So now that we know what the studio display is not, I bet you really wanna know what makes this display so great. But before I tell you what's great and why it's the best external display you can get for Mac, let's take a look at what's not so great about what this display is. And the first not so great thing about the studio display is that built-in camera. Yes, the built-in ultra wide camera on the studio display is not a good camera. The quality is just lacking. No matter what you do and no matter how much light you add to your room, the video still looks grainy and soft and just artificial. And that's after the software update that Apple released to fix among other things, the camera quality. And the camera does have center stage to kind of move around and adjust the scene for you or when somebody else comes into the frame. But I don't know why that would be more important than a good picture quality. The camera on the M1 iMac, which is a much thinner device, has an exponentially better camera than what the studio display has. And speaking of camera updates, it's so weird doing software updates on a display like this. The studio display has basically an iOS computer inside running an A13 chip that controls the video, the camera, the mics, the speakers, and just like any other iPhone or iPad, it's going to be getting a number of software updates. And yes, it's probably good that Apple has a mechanism in place to do software updates, even for a display, but it's very strange when doing a software update on the desktop display where you can't do anything with the display for 20 minutes or more. The updates take a really long time and there's nothing you can do except sit there quietly or walk away. You just, you can't use your computer while the update is happening on the display. Next, when it comes to the price of the studio display, I don't think the pricing is great. The display starts at $1,600 for a tilt adjustable stand or a visa mount. And that really is an or statement because you can't get the stand then choose later for free to switch to a visa or vice versa. What you buy is what you get unless you take it to an Apple store and pay them to swap it out, which probably means swapping the whole back case or just giving you a whole new display for a fee. I do have the height and tilt adjustable stand here, which runs at a $400 premium over the base stand. Plus you can also get a nano texture anti-glare display for another $300. And to be fair, the studio display does have a lot more to it than any other cheaper display you're gonna find, which we'll get to. But even at that base price of $1,600, you could get three to five 4K displays if that's what you want. And lastly, I don't like how hard it is to get one of these things. We're more than three months out since the release. And if you order a studio display today, you're looking at a 10 to 12 week delivery time. Of course, there are a ton of reasons for this. And I was going to make an ill-timed joke about how it's harder to get a studio display than, but, I'm not gonna do that. All right, so that's all the things that are not great about this display. So what is great about this display? 
First off, something you absolutely will not find on any other display, period, is this level of build quality. I love the look of this display. The outside is all aluminum with a big black Apple logo on the back, an all aluminum stand, and a minimalist front with uniform bezels all the way around. Walking into my office every day and seeing this on my desk just makes me feel good. It's a crazy, irrational feeling that I get from this. I love the clean look of the stand that isn't plastic, colored, or covered in logos, and the perforations on the top and bottom for the fans and speakers, respectively. It's just a very solid, very clean design that, again, no other monitor comes close to. Now, just looking at the stand, there is no other display that has a stand this fluid except for the Pro Display XDR, but that aside, you can adjust the height and tilt of this display with a finger. Every other display I've ever used has a more rigid adjustment, making it difficult to get the exact height or angle you're looking for. They always just move a little bit too far, and then you try to move it back a little bit, and it goes a little bit too far, and it goes back and forth, and you just can't get the perfect angle that you're looking for. But the studio display can be adjusted easily and correctly the first time. On the backside, you do get a built-in USB-C hub with three ports next to the Thunderbolt connection, and these ports support up to 10 gigabits per second, which is perfect for running an external SSD and something like a mouse dongle. I personally also use a CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 dock for additional ports and the SD card readers, but if you don't need all that, then the built-in ports on the studio display will be great. Now, I mentioned before that the built-in camera is not great. But if you can set aside the quality of the camera because maybe you don't care about the quality or maybe like me, it's just not something you use a lot, then the fact that it just has the built-in camera and microphone for those instances when you need it is great. This means you don't need to go out and buy another external USB camera that sits on the top of the display like an eyesore with a cable running down the back for connecting to the computer or even to the back of the display. And when the need arises for work or personal, you can fire up your favorite video call app and be good to go. There's no troubleshooting or trying to make sure that the camera's selected or even plugged in. The video just works. The speakers in the studio display, on the other hand, more than just work. The speakers in this display are fantastic. They're clear, they're loud enough, and they have a full sound. The speakers give out more bass than a device of this form factor should be able to deliver, and they completely fill up my 14 by 14 inch office with plenty of sound. I've used them for video and audio editing, watching movies, listening to music, whatever. The speakers just deliver. They are simply the best built-in speakers I've ever used on any computing device, period. But I will say that good external speakers will always produce more volume, 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 more volume and more response. But since I've started using the studio display, I haven't even touched or connected my beloved Cantu U2 speakers at all. Now with the camera, the speakers, and the microphones all built into the studio display, this gives you a more compact, clean setup, which is great in my opinion. And finally, we should probably talk about the display on this studio display, right? Yeah, it's great. We talked about what features this display does not have, but what it has is arguably more important in my opinion, which is resolution brightness, color accuracy, and consistency. These panels are 5K panels, which means they have a native resolution of 5120 by 2880 pixels, which is 218 pixels per inch and more than any other display you're going to get at 27 inches. At the default macOS settings, this means that every pixel the computer draws is actually being displayed by four physical pixels in this display, giving you much sharper images and text at the same size. I spent years trying out different displays and there is just nothing as crisp and sharp at 27 inches as this display and, well, the 5K IMAX. The studio display also gets up to 600 nits of brightness, which is brighter than any other external display I've seen with SDR content. This display can get bright enough to be comfortable no matter how much light you have in your room or office. I can't even use this thing at max brightness because it burns my eyeballs. So I usually have this display set to around 50%. And if you're comparing against any other sub $1,000 display, you will see that most of them are in the range of 250 to 350 nits of max brightness, which can be limiting depending on your setup. These displays are each factory calibrated for P3 wide color, which may or may not mean something to you, but if you are a professional photographer or videographer, you probably will appreciate the wide colors you can get from these displays. But for regular people, 
This is important because it means that Apple tries to make all of their displays look the same. So for example, if you take a photo on your iPhone and look at it on your Mac, you want it to look the same. It will look the same between your Apple devices. So you don't have to worry that one display has a completely different color temperature or color balance than the other. For me, the fact that most of my viewers are probably watching on an Apple device means that videos that I edit on this studio display will look basically the same on your end. And I love that. So the studio display is great because of the built-in features, the design and the display consistency. But the number one reason the studio display is the single best display I've used with a Mac is because it works. Unlike so many other displays I've tried, which have had issues with turning on or distortions or flickering or other anomalies, this studio display works every time I wake up my Mac or turn it on. And I'm still getting comments every day on previous videos where I showed all of the issues I was having with external displays and Macs. And the problems are not limited to just M1 Macs or Intel Macs and date back to at least Catalina. Constant troubleshooting is needed sometimes to get a third-party external display to just work on a Mac. So many people struggle with this every day, but the studio display has not had one single issue like this for me in the last three months. It works consistently every day for me, and that's why it's the best display I've used with a Mac. But, but this is bad because it proves Apple's not putting in the effort to make sure that the industry standard displays work correctly with Mac OS just as well as their own displays and makes the starting price of $1,600 that much worse. So it's up to you if the trade-off for simplicity, usability, and the best build quality you can find is enough to justify the studio display. And if so, this is the single best display you can get for Mac. Yes, it is expensive. And no, it does not have every display feature imaginable, but this is the best Mac experience, pound for pound, features and quality, and a design that is just a pleasure to use. And there just are no other contenders. So let me know what you guys think below. And if you want to see what else pairs well with the studio display for your desk setup, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.